Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4G Mac Resource in Houston, and this is the third video three, uh, going over point to point or P2P, and we'll go over the uh, settings of the GS18 rover. Um, in this example, we're using a GS18 rover, but we could be using a GS18i, 18t, GS16, GS05, or GS07, or even a third party. But in this case, we're going to go over there uh, using a CS20 with a GS18. So once again, um, as we talked about in the last one, uh, we, we had a GS18 set up uh, using a DAC static IP SIM card for point to point. On the rover um, and in the CS20, and the same CS20 is used to set up the base on the rover. In this example, we're actually using an AT&T SIM card with broadband. Um, once again, if you're using a Verizon SIM card, then we'd have this APN typed in. And if you're using a multi-carrier DAC card, we'd have the SIM, uh, the APN DAC. So this is the list of the different uh, APNs on the rover side. And uh, there's a Smart Connect option through SmartNet, and this would be the APN to type in. So you'll see in the video where we type the APN in to get on the internet, and in this case, we'll be using a generic AT&T SIM card. So once again, it is possible for G4 to help you out. Um, if you want to get a DAC card that's multi-carrier that hops on Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile for the rover, we can do that. And once again, we can help you get the static IP for the uh, base station. All right, let's take a look quickly, start off. Um, we're gonna go over how to start with Bluetooth into the actual GS18 rover. Okay, uh, we have Captivate up here. I'm gonna quickly show you right now, um, we're not interfaced uh, to the GS18. So um, I'm using a simulator right now, but I'll, I'll just go through the procedure to Bluetooth to the sensor. So um, if I hold down the star key, um, warp style, um, I've got a setup where I got a IMAX and a near, which is SmartNet. And then in the previous video, we set up number three for P2P base, and we took out all the internet connectivities for the rover. And now I'm going to load this P2P rover, and we'll hit next. And the first thing I want to do is pair it up to the GS sensor. So what I do, like in the previous video, we, we talked about I've got two sensors and do base rover. Uh, let's turn the base off and just turn the rover on so we it just Bluetooth the only one that's available. So once again, make sure we have firmware compatibility. If you've got version 9 on the controller, make sure we have version 9 on the GS18. So the Bluetooth, we'll just go to settings, connections, GS connection wizard, and then we'll pick GS18 and hit next. And in this case, we'll do Bluetooth. Um, you can use YLAN if you have a GS18i. Um, for imaging, that will speed up the transmission of the uh, imaging down to the data collector. This is critical. Uh, GS18, you can use with either T, you can either use Bluetooth or YLAN. So let's hit next. And then the search button, when we hit this, uh, we should see then the serial number, and then we'll pair it up, and then this will spin here and connect. Okay. So that's how we pair up uh, in the work style. Um, and we'll just go back and go back to the main screen. And just uh, when we are working, once again, we'll get on the internet. Uh, if you click on here, current position, baseline, this is just a tip here. This WG84 length will show you how far you are away from the base station. So we showed that in the first video, but with the rover, you can keep track. You want to keep that below 20 miles for accuracy. This, so the closer you are to the base station, the better. So I just really want to show you how we can have mobile work styles. Um, once again, we'll configure to get the internet on the rover. And um, and what I did in my rover work style, I turned off the, the base set here. So if I hit settings, customization, app visibility, I have a check mark through the uh, switch to base, just because I have a separate uh, work style for my base station. Okay. All right, um, let's move on next. Uh, like we talked about earlier, um, if we're using the same data collector to run the rover and the base, um, just make sure the firmware is compatible. So our example here, version 9 came out. So we have version 9 on the CS20. We had 9 load on GS18 base and version 9 on the rover. Um, so once again, if, if one of these were on version 8, we'd have a problem with compatibility. So just make sure everyone's on the same level of, of firmware. Okay, 
Okay, um, we have the CS20, and we just set the base up. So hit the star button, um, hit work style. Um, the base is set up. So what I'll do now is I'll click on here, and I'm going to change it now to rover. Because now I want to get on the rover and dial in. So hit next. And let's take a look here. I'll take a second to load. And I call it that number four P2P rover version 9, because we're on version 9 firmware. Okay. Take a quick look at the settings. So right off the bat, the Bluetooth light's going to come on. It should pair up with the sensor, which is nearby. There it goes. And right now we're not on the internet. We'll give it a second, and then this should pair up over the internet. Okay. So it's taking a look under device, and this is a strictly an AT&T card. And then after a few more minutes, the the bar level will come up. So once again, um, my settings down here. If I hit settings. Connections, all the connections, CS Internet, hit edit, and now it's turned on. Okay, and once again, I'll hit control for the APN. In this case, I'm using broadband because I'm on the AT&T. Uh, if you're using a DAC card, once again, use the capital DAC. Okay, all right, that's good. Um, once again, we pair it up via Bluetooth. Um, it's important. And page over um, to RT GS connections and RTK rover. I'll hit edit and we want to say, yep, we want to receive RTK corrections, CS Internet 1, that's where the modem is, and once again, RTCM data. RTK base is automatic. RTK network, I'm checking. That's fine. And now if I hit control, this is where I had a P2P server name. So I hit that and hit edit. Once again, that's where I typed in that IP that we got from the base station. It's very important. And the port is 5678, and the end trip is no. So we'll hit OK and hit OK here. And that's um, just a quick overview on the rover settings. Okay. So once again, we um, have 22 satellites. Um, if I go to settings, GS sensor, satellite tracking, once again, I'm going to check all those boxes for the constellations. And under advanced, I'll do 15 degrees, on path reduction, automatic, automatic. Very important. And now when we're ready, um, I go to the measure screen, or so go to the stakeout screen. I'm going to stake out and check my first point, my, my check shot. And we're set up on the nail. So right now we're not dialed in, so we're off a few feet and 10 feet vertical. Um, I can hit F11, or I'll just show you here, I can hit start streaming data. It's going to connect and start pumping. This is a tilt and it's fixed. And now my check shot, to so see how close it is. And once again, we're only 70 feet away, um, but within vertical is wow, bang on, like under a couple hundreds. It's amazing. Same with horizontal. There's an elevation there. So now I know I'm on the right point. I got a check shot and I can go and start collecting data as per normal. Um, when I'm finished, once again, I come here and say stop streaming data to hang up. Okay. And um, just real fast, if I was up here um, with the Moody path reduction on, it's kicking out some like three of the satellites that are noisy. And you can see we got seven, eight Chinese, seven Europeans. So these constellations really help improve the tracking capability in tougher environments. And right now we're in a pretty tough environment uh, next to a tree. But those are some quick settings on how to set up the rover and how to dial in and how to, we can then start doing our measures, stake to points, stake the lines, all the, the stuff you're used to doing. And, you know, I can get up to 20 miles away. So the further I get away, my CQs will increase and my accuracy will decrease. Um, but the neat thing is I can have up to 10 rovers working off of it and um, just really push the boundaries. Okay? So I'll do that now. We'll hit stop streaming data and then we should be in good shape. Okay. Uh, just some tips uh, using point-to-point. -point. Once again, if I'm inside the network, I can set a point on the job site, maybe set a couple points with the network, uh, set a point to set the base up and wide open, and then set a check shot nearby. And I might want to do point to point to, to because I'm going to go into a tougher environment with these trees. Or let's say I am 20 miles away from the base station, my CQs are getting a little bit high, um, then point to point will allow us to uh, really dial that down. Um, and uh, once the base is set up on known point, 
Once again, we'll check into that check shot, make sure everything's okay. In this case, we're set up uh, using the base with the pole. Um, you can use a tripod. So once again, we just have to change in the base station setup, uh, you know, if it's a pole or a tripod, okay? Um, and what's important is we, we have to make sure that we have uh, internet. So we have Verizon internet coverage at the base station. And in this example, we're using AT&T, okay? Uh, if you're outside internet coverage, like we talked about in the previous video, then we have to set up news radios. Um, so once again, um, the advantage of point to point is, oops, if you take a look here, is um, we'd have improved tracking in a treated environment. So this is where our check shot was. It's kind of hard to see the uh, GS18, uh, but we're in a bunch of palm trees and we're checking within 200s of vertical. And so we have improved tracking in trees to get those shots we couldn't get before. And uh, once again, the accuracy, if you're like setting concrete or uh, setting a vertical that you can, um, once again, take a look at your CQs, take a look at the repeatability. If it's gotta be really, really tight, use a total station, but hopefully this open the avenue uh, for using RGKs and point to point uh, to you know really improve your vertical repeatability. All right, and um, once again, here's Bruno who's at our office. So uh, Bruno approves of it and says, you wanna be a big dog and work, use point to point. It really helped out to your, your key of success. Um, and, and this is just a picture of the team. We need any help with surveying supplies, service, uh, survey equipment or support. This is a picture of the team in Houston. Uh, once again, Bruno, Stacy's dog, handles security detail. And uh, here's all our information here. So here's our address, and uh, I'm Jeff, and here's uh, all the phone numbers and emails of our team. If you need any help, feel free to reach out. We'd love to help you out. And uh, hope you found this beneficial, and appreciate all your time.